turn thing. He can if it gets bad enough. But it automatically levels the bubble. So no matter what kind of bumps it goes through, because you're not going to pay $2,000 to go on a trip and be shook up like a ping pong ball. So what it does is it makes the trip a lot more enjoyable. It makes the bubble stay in the middle. It reacts. It's a sound mind. And how many knows in life, we need a little more stabilization in our life. <laughs> we don't need to be bounced around. We don't need to be bounced around by every wind, wave, and storm that comes our way. We got to be like that, Sal, that big old jet airliner. We got we to gotta stabilize sometimes, okay? And so God does that through his spirit as we begin to know what God's word says and believe that over what our senses say. And so what this song, we got to start prophesying the word over our situations <laughs> and stop letting our situations blow our bubble around, okay? How many knows we got to keep that bubble in the middle? And the way you do that is you get in your word and you minister, minister it in the spirit and you start to speak the truth of God over your life. So when that, when that sensory, when that threat comes against you and the fear button goes off and that fly, flight or fight thing goes off in your head and that adrenaline releases and you have that panic attack or you go nuts or you feel like going nuts, then you start prophesying the word of God that says, I am more than a conqueror. I, I am the head, not the tail. All things are working you got to start prophesying the word and you got to keep that bubble in the middle. How many knows that? Amen. Because you're building something. How many knows God is building something on you? <laughs> Upon this rock I shall build my church. God is building stuff in your life. He's building stuff on your... He's building in your family. He's building in your family. The devil says destruction, but God says I'm doing the work. And I am building on your family. <laughs> but you can't build on a crooked foundation, Romo. <laughs> you got to stabilize that thing. You got to keep the bubble in the middle, baby. Keep the bubble in the middle. The bubble. Keep the bubble in the middle. Or keep the bubble in the middle. Keep it all in the middle. Sound mind, all right? So just one more verse. <laughs> Prophesy. One more verse of that. Come on. Sing it out. Come on. Me. Speak over your life. Jesus Speak over your family. Come on. Watch over me. Command my soul to wake her eyes. Use each breath to prophesy. I prophesy. You saved him. Deliver me. Jesus' blood. Watch over me. Command my soul to wake her eyes. Use each breath to prophesy. A sound mind for the spirit of fear. A sound mind so that I can see clearly. A sound mind, your spirit is here. A sound mind, a sound mind. A sound mind for the spirit of fear. A sound mind so that I can see clearly. A sound mind, your spirit.
continue the worship with our tithes and offerings. All right, Morning, everybody. We'll take this time to receive our tithes and offerings. As always, we'll have the plates out. If you'd like to give online, you can do that at lostcreekministries.org. Click on the online giving tab. We also have PayPal. It's lostcreekva at paypal.com. We'll leave the plates up here as they sing another song. Uh, just bring your offerings on up. Thank you. Let's thank him that we had the ability to give our tithes and offerings this morning. Isn't that good? Isn't that good? We got to. We got to. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. And I, I pray that you have the most cheerful heart today as you gave, okay? That's what it's about. How many believe that, 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 that this praise team did an awesome job this morning? Isn't it awesome? I thought it was powerful. And I thank the sound crew and everybody up there for doing as well. I was just giving Lakin a hard time. She's not the Wi-Fi, though I normally expect her to be everything, including the Wi-Fi. But uh, she did a great job. All those people up there do a great job. And everybody, the bus drivers, the greeters, everybody that makes this place go. We're a body. The church is the ecclesia. It's a body. So if somebody says, I don't like a church, what you're saying is I don't like the people because that's what a church means, an ecclesia, a body. Uh, but God says, love God, love people. And they're not perfect here. We're not perfect. I'm not perfect. We're people. But we're here serving a perfect God, trying our best to do better every day and love people like God does. That's all we can do. 
is let's love people like God does and do our best at that, okay? So we thank you guys for all being here and making us a part of your Memorial Day plans. The word's getting ready to come. If the children, the Mighty Oaks, would come forward, please. All the Mighty Oaks. You just want to read it? I can't see good when they get up here. Everybody? I can't, I can't get Memorial Day off my heart when I see all these children and think that we've got the opportunity to love on these kids all weekend because somebody gave their life for them. And, and more importantly, Jesus gave his life for them. And so these are some awesome kiddos. How many think we have the most awesome kiddos in the world? Now, I'm going to brag. Somebody says you shouldn't compare yourself to other churches, and I'm not saying we're the best pastors, preachers, or singers of any other church. I would never say that. There's some awesome pastors, preachers, and singers all around this area. But I will say this. We definitely got the best kids of any church in this area. I tell you that right now. (laughs) So uh, maybe I'm biased, you think? It's just truth, right? We speak the truth. Uh, We've got some uh, youth leaders that are going to help the adult leaders this morning and Miss, uh, Past- Miss Pastor Val is going to read their names. And if they would come uh, and lead the kids out, they're going to big help. They do a lot of things. And just so you understand, these kids aren't babysitted. They're taught. But also the youth leaders, they're going to be they're in here many Sundays learning and, 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 and being ministered to. But then when they go back and minister to these kids, they learn as well. So Val, if you'll identify the youth leaders today. Miss Amira, Allie, and Bella. So give it up for our youth leaders. And if you guys want to lead the Mighty Oaks out of here, okay? Come on, give it up for the Mighty Oaks. Okay, we'll do that in the children's church for her birthday party. Okay. Okay, thanks. Hey, Ben. Thanks. Keep me, keep me in line, okay? <laughs> I knew they were going to hand out cards in children's church. <laughs> Josh, I know you got your word out. If you come here real quick, I want you just to bless the word, and we're getting going. I, I, we're really doing our best to stay going. And it's, it's 1130, and the word's coming. So just bless it. Y'all, get your, get your, roll your sleeves up and put your bib on. Let's get hungry. Father, we thank you for your goodness, your love, and your mercy, and your grace, God. And I give you glory, and I give you honor, and I thank you that your word is truth. And I pray an anointing over your servant this morning, Lord. I pray that you would cover him, God, with fire and with love and with anointing and with freshness, Lord Jesus. I pray that your wisdom would be on him, God, that the knowledge of God would flow out of him. I pray that the word that comes out of him, God, would cut us, Lord, that you would reveal things in us, God, and lay us bare before you, Lord, that we would go to places because of this word, God, that we've never dreamed we would go before, Lord. Let that fire that's in him, God, burn hotter and brighter, Father, and do more than he ever thought it could do, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I ask these things. And we give you glory and honor because we know it comes from you. In the name of Jesus, we give you glory. Amen. So we give honor to the messenger, but we celebrate the word of God. Give it up for the word of God as it comes. Mrs. R is going to be helping me here in a few minutes, too. I, I don't know. I think uh, this thing gets better with age, and, and, uh, and I think we do better together with age. And so uh, how many knows that um, having a, you know, you got to have tag team. We're all tag teaming this morning, trying to, trying to get somewhere, trying to do something. And I appreciate you all being here this morning. This uh, happy, 
is it? It's not to tomorrow, is it? But happy what? Memorial Day. Memorial Day. All right. I heard this side say it. I didn't even hear anybody on this side say it. So you all must not be wishing anybody happy anything. Let's all say it. Happy what? Memorial Day. Memorial Day. How many knows it's not always been called Memorial Day? It was originally called Decoration Day. And it was to honor Civil War um, men who had lost their lives on the field of battle. And the 1970s became official holiday. And we know it as Memorial Day. Memorial is an interesting word, okay? It's a powerful word. Everything we're doing this morning is about we're remembering. You know, how many seen a lot of flags out? Okay, on Memorial Day, people really... And you've been watching the news uh, down in uh, Johnson City where the Veterans Cemetery is. Uh, there's big festivities where they go and honor at Arlington. They do the same thing. They remember the known, unknown soldiers, all those who have fallen in combat. But memorial just simply means to remember. How many, how many knows that we need to remember some things? Wow, I, I, can, tell, I, I can tell who our, our own, uh, own crowd is today. <laughs> I believe I'll take the side out that's the more into it today, Danner. No, 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 I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, wow, well, wow, well, wow. Well. How many knows that you're into it helps me preach better? My mom taught me that when she was cooking at home. If we didn't act like we liked what she liked, then, you know, she, well, Okay. But when, when you bragged on her cooking, wow, let's, let's do it again. Let's make it even better next time. So, but this morning, this day and this special time of the year is about remembering. I know, and I, I, I don't want to do some kind of, um, we're, we're going to time, this is not, we're not going to be long here. Mrs. R is going to help me here in a few minutes with something. But it's a day to remember. We, you know, every day, Every day should be a memorial day in our life. We should remember what Jesus has done for us. Can I remind you where you came from? Hello, can I remind you what addiction God extracted you from? Can I remember what darkness God brought you out of? Can I remind you of what brokenness God healed you and brought you out of? Can I remind you of the time that no one was there but God? Can I remind you of that? So this day is about reminding people of something significant and important. We forget. Oh, we forget, we forget, we forget. We forget. Oh, we forget. Listen, I'm 60. I forgot how old I am. I think I'm 68. Mrs. R just, she just whipped it right there to me. You're 68. Although I learned an interesting fact that my birth certificate on my marriage License says, I'm 69. I don't like that birth certificate. <laughs> or, or, or I don't like that on, written on the, uh, on the marriage license. But my actual birth certificate says I was born in 1953, which makes me 68 years of age. But what I'm saying is, at this age, I can remember. Uh, I remember this, me remembering more things than I remember now. I, I, I forget. I forget things. Uh, I'll, I'll go after something in the house and forget what I went after. Oh, come on. I, I know I'm talking to people who got it all together. You know, Lord, why are you even giving me this word? I, I'm talking to people, their lives are all together. They don't forget anything. You don't forget anything, right? Right, Tina? Is that why you have to remind Boo? Or maybe Boo reminds you. I don't know. 
How many has ever forgot something? People forget. Listen, people be, can be so forgetful they forget their, their honey's birthdays. That's a bad thing to re, uh, forget, I promise you. You'll stay in the doghouse for a while. Yeah. You'll, you'll stay in the doghouse for a while. Yeah, if you forget your wife or husband's birthday or you forget your children's birthday. But as we age, we're prone more to forget. That comes with age. But also in life, forgetfulness comes with an area called busyness. Because we can get too much on our brain. How many knows there's only so much that your brain can process? And you can get so busy that you forget. You forget, you forget, you forget. You forget. You forget. But you know, over and over again in the Word of God, God reminds us God's about memory. You know, memory is a powerful gift from God. That's why I hate diseases that counterattack our memories. And listen, and, and these, these devilish diseases that attack people's memories and, and take them to places. But listen, your memory is a gift. What God gives you to remember is a gift. You have a gift. If you can remember, then you're gifted today. If you can remember that this is the day the Lord has made, I will rejoice and be glad. If you can remember that God loves you, then hallelujah. If you can remember that God brought you out, then it's a powerful gift. Wow, you're gifted. You're gifted. But the Lord has created over time the many ways to remember his works. He wants us to live in remembrance. He doesn't necessarily want you to live in your past, but he wants you to remember what he brought you from in your past. And he wants you... You can't, listen, you can't erase your past. Only the blood of Jesus can cleanse you from your past. Your past will always be there. But God promises you a future delivered from your past. Remember that today. Remember. Remember. Every time we see an American flag waving, I remember what men have done for me to purchase that. I, I remember the freedom that I enjoy today at their expense. I remember that somebody walked into a field of battle, put his life on the line, and became the ultimate sacrifice for my freedom. Do you remember? Listen, we can get so busy in life that we forget how blessed we are. You're blessed. Turn to somebody and say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed, Tony, because I can remember what somebody did for me one day. I remember that somebody, listen, when I, I know people look at it this a different way, and I'm not going to get into all that. But when the flag is raised and the Star Spangled Banner, I know there are people who have different opinions about that. But listen, I remember that this is not a perfect nation. I remember that this is a people who are striving for an ultimate idea of freedom. And I know that people view that in a lot of different ways. But when I hear, when I hear the anthem and when I see the flag, I'm reminded of what somebody did for me. Sorry, whatever, whatever your idea is on that, I know there's a time for peaceful protests. There's a time to do these things. But I, when I see the American flag, I remember that somebody died. Somebody went on a field of battle. 
Somebody risked their life. Somebody bled and died for me. So I could have this moment. So you could have this moment. Oh, when we get in our sealed houses and we get in our, our blessed ways of life, we can forget what the Lord has done for us. Remember when you didn't have two pennies to rub together? Remember, remember when you were more in the barrel than you were on the top. Remember when you were down low. Remember, remember somebody brought you up. Remember when you didn't have a friend in the world. Remember, remember when there was nobody there. Remember, remember what the Lord has done. When I give out these crosses, these little crosses, to me it's like the American flag. And what it stands for. Listen, I've actually been these out and people throw them back at me and say, I don't believe in giving crosses out today. The cross is over. Listen, friend, lead me to the cross. I don't know what your religious viewpoint is, but the cross purchased your freedom, brother. What Jesus died on that cross purchased your freedom. How can you forget the cross? I believe the devil's, I believe it would be the devil's ambition to want you to forget the cross. When I give these out, I remember, and God wants us to remember. There are times that God wants us throughout our life to remember. He wants us to remember things. God doesn't forget us. Oh, aren't you glad that God didn't forget you? Come on, you wouldn't be sitting here today if God forgot you. Oh, you couldn't even tie your shoe if God forgot you. You couldn't have got yourself up and got yourself going had God forgot you. Oh, let me remind you this real quickly. And we're going to get to a scripture. Uh, somehow or another, I knew it would be one of these. Isaiah 49 and 15. Can a woman forget her nursing child? Yeah. That she should have no compassion on the son of her womb? Even these may forget. Hear me. Even these may forget. Yet I will not forget you. Did you hear that, Trish? I'm not going to forget you. I'm not going to forget you. Aren't you glad for that today? That Jesus doesn't forget us. The Lord, you're always on his mind. And just to make sure you understand that, he says your names are engraved. Now for all the people who preach against the tattoos and all that stuff I'm not going there but listen yeah. but listen God put your name on his hand so he would not forget who you are mm. God doesn't forget oh he doesn't forget he doesn't forget he doesn't forget somebody Turn to somebody and say, he doesn't forget. And you know what this is right here? What is this? Come on, help me out. You ever see those four, Brittany? How many of those have your supervisor left for you? Stuck on your whatever, your cubby or whatever, your station? Don't forget. How many of those have you got from a secretary? Don't forget to call. Now you're, you're, getting, you're getting sophisticated now. Now we got emails and all that stuff, which is, is a new type of sticky note. 
I'm old school. I still like sticky notes. You know what? We've got too new school to think about old school. <laughs> Don't throw away the old school. You remember what those who come before you, what trails they blazed, what battles they fought, what wars they were engaged in, what devils they fought, what people they encountered to get us here. So sticky notes remind us, and I've always told people this, and people don't believe me, but God gives, leaves us sticky notes. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. He, he does. He, he, he gives us sticky notes. <laughs> yes, yes. He sends us reminders. And the Lord says, but I'll not forget you. Even if my father and my mother abandon me, the Lord will hold me close. Psalm 27, 10. Even though my father and mother may abandon me, and that's possible, but my God will hold me close. That's brought great comfort to me. Though you walk out on me, God will still hold me close. Though you jump off the boat and swim in another direction, God will hold me close. I'm reminded this morning, Henry, that God's got me, brother. God's got me. Hallelujah. And guess what? You can't take that from me. Memory is a powerful thing. Don't forget where you came from. Don't. Don't forget where you came from. Did you hear me? Don't forget where you came from. Don't forget what hellish hole you were buried in. Don't forget what dark corner you was hiding in. Don't forget what jail cell God extracted you from. Don't forget what prison God opened the door and brought you out of. You see, what we forget today is that God wants us to remember where we came from. Uh, somebody help me out. Okay. I, I need these 12 stones placed right here. Come on, come on, come on. You got to sort of run. Right, take those 12 stones and stack them right here. I'm going somewhere. I'm not going to throw those rocks at you, okay? Oh, yeah. That's just as, as important. God, yeah, it, it just up in a pile. Oh, wow. Everybody know what that thing is? Don't worry about those stones. They're doing their job. You know what this is? I've got my foot on something else I want you to look at. Well, let me hold it up. I can't throw it very far. But you know what this is? How many knows? Those aren't not important to you till you need one. You never think about it until you need it. You never know it's in your vehicle until you need it. And you called out somewhere in the rain and the dark. And you say, my tire's flat. Oh, Jesus, what am I going to do? And then the thought comes to your mind. Well, you've got to spare. If you're blessed, you do. I come up old school. I didn't always have a spare. If it was, it was flat. Oh, some of you are laughing at me. I know what you know. You know what I'm talking about. You never need one of those. You never know you got it. I say until you need it. And I know you're not worried about that so much together right now, brother. You're not. You're, but listen, in a few years, you're going to be riding that automobile down the road. You're going to be wishing you had one of those when your tire goes plump flat. That's the way we treat God. We never think about him until we need him. We, we never call on him. We never worship him. We never get in his word. We never think of that until we're going through a crisis. 
God don't want you to just wait to a crisis to remember he's the Christ. Christ is the Christ in your crisis. And God is so loving that he'll take that. If that's all you can do, he'll... But he wants us to remember. He wants us to go with this constant remembrance. And Jacob had such an encounter with God that he had such an encounter with God that he could not forget this. In the book of Genesis 28, he had such an encounter with God. Jacob, who later become Israel. If you've studied your Bible, you know, I know people say, well, I don't know all these names, Pastor. Or you're, you're, you're spitting out names that I don't know. Well, then you got to continue to be a student of the Word of God. Get yourself into the Word to remember who Jacob was. The, the blessings of God came to Jacob. It came to Abraham, Isaac. But then it ended in Jacob's lap. And Jacob really wasn't deserving of that because he was a swindler. He was a crook. That'll give you encouragement here today. You didn't get here because you deserved it. You got here because somebody loved you. Regardless of your past, God says, remember that. Remember, I brought you here. Remember, I brought you here. You didn't bring me here. God brought me here. You didn't call me. God called me. You didn't get me up and deliver me from sin. God did. God has thrown my sins into the sea of forgetfulness. <laughs> and when we try to bring our past up before God and say, God, I don't believe you can forgive me for that. If you've come to the blood of Jesus, as you said, if you've had your sins washed under the blood of Jesus and you keep bringing up your past to God, God's going to keep saying, what past? What past? What past? I've washed your past away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Are you with me? Hang on with me. Hang on with me. Don't forget. Don't get it. You're checking out on me right now. Then that, that's a plot. Hang on. Hang on. Don't forget, Jacob. Don't forget this. And there the Lord, Jacob calls Jacob to have a dream. He dreamed that God opened the heaven. There was a ladder going up and down. Provisions were coming down and blessing praise were going up and there he had such a remembrance that he after that encounter he took a stone and he anointed with the oil and the purpose of that stone was to cause him to remember that place where God found him do you remember the place where God found you do you remember the night Jesus got you up do you remember the night he saved you when you coded, when you didn't have any way out? But God says, I'm there because my hand's on you. I've got something I want to do in you. Have you forgotten that? Hallelujah. Don't forget that. God says, don't forget it. Don't forget it. Don't forget it. Don't forget it, Brian. Don't forget what he's done for you. So... Wow, later, Jacob encountered the Lord and he wrestled with the Lord. And he called this place because he wouldn't let go. And that night, God changed his name <laughs> from swindler to prince with God. He called his name Israel. He called his name Israel. And I'll bless your seed, Jacob. And I don't want you to ever forget this day. And Jacob remembered it because he called the place El Bethel, which meant God is here. This is the place where God is. You know, every time we come together and worship, 
You see, this is not just a place that I do when I don't have anything else to do. This is a place that I love to be at. Oh, this is a place where I can encounter I can encounter God everywhere and anywhere. Listen, God's everywhere. He's not just in a building. But when we come together, there is something powerful. There is something life-changing. There is something uniquely different about this experience. Even I've heard people who listen in and thank the Lord for those listening today. Lord, wherever they may be. But who say, Pastor, it's not the same. Well, you're doing the best you can in that moment. And it has a purpose. But God says, I don't want you to remember. I won't, don't want you to forget. Hebrews 10, 25. When you come together, I want you, when you come together to worship, you know what you're doing? Remembering what God has done for you. We're remembering as a collective body what God has brought us from and what God is doing this in our life. Every time you hear a word preached, God's causing you to remember. <laughs> wow, look at the sticky notes God sent this morning. I bet some of you, are you throwing them away? As soon as you get one, right now some of you should be plastered up. You should look like one big, you should look like one big sticky note. Come on, Mrs. R. Nobody else would take this right. Turn around, please. Come here, Val. Put them all over. Because every time we come together and worship, God is sending all these sticky notes to us, reminding us of his love toward us, reminding us that he has us, Reminded us there's hope. Reminding us that you have a future. Reminded us that you have a calling. Reminding us that you're not a failure. Reminding us that he loves you regardless. Reminding you, reminding you, reminding you. Don't forget. Thank you. Oh, they won't see. I'm stubborn. Yeah. That'll preach. How many gets where I'm going? Yes. Joshua, the children of Israel. Well, when God called the children of Israel out of the land of bondage, he delivered them with a great hand of deliverance. He sent Moses, which is a type of Jesus, to us. And he opened Egypt's prison door. And he bought over, brought over 2 million Jews out in one day. But he did something. Well, for that great last dreaded plague that God sent upon the land of Egypt, he told Moses to prepare for that. He says, I want you to put blood, the blood of a pure lamb. I want you to put it over the doorpost. And never has Egypt heard such a cry in all of Egypt. And I'll send the angel of death. And wherever the blood has not been applied, the firstborn of Egypt will be removed from Egypt. Except, everybody say except. except. Oh, for you. Except for those who have had the blood applied. Aren't you glad? I want you to remember something. You're sitting there and you really don't know what you got. The blood of Jesus cleanses you from all righteousness. He has bought you. He has saved you. He has rescued you. I know you, you say, you're acting a wild man. I get excited about what I'm doing. If you can't get excited about what Jesus is doing and you, something's missing. I didn't say you had to act like crazy like me. 
but you ought to get excited when you remember what the Lord has done for you. And every time we come together, we remember that Jesus died for us and that he applied the blood. All the blood, all the blood of Jesus. All the blood of Jesus. All the blood of Jesus. It washed me white as snow. How many know the blood of Jesus washed you? Remember that. Remember that he bought you. You've been bought with a price. You didn't buy yourself. I don't care how much money you make. I don't care how many degrees are on the wall. I don't care how many accolades you have to your charge. Listen, you have been bought with a price. The blood of Jesus bought you from a life of sin and gave you hope within. Every person in here, believer, worse in the blood, you're richer than you think. Quit worrying about what you don't have. Start rejoicing in what you do have. Come on! Quit pining because you don't got what your neighbor's got. Listen, start rejoicing because maybe you've got something your neighbor don't got. I'm about ready to get happy and come back there and start happy dancing with some of you all. Remember, don't forget that. Moses, my angel of death will pass over. And wherever the blood is applied, I'll pass over. And he did. And everywhere the blood was applied, there was escape from that plight. And God says, I want you to do something, Moses, so you will remember this day. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Mm. He says, wherever I see the blood applied, I'll pass over. Moses, I want you to remember this. I want you to institute this as a, as a time to remember me. I want you to remember me by celebrating this Passover with me. I want you to remember this. I want you to take the lamb without spot or blemish. And I want you to, I want you to take the bitter herbs to remind you of the bitterness that God extracted you from. See, there was a day in your life when you were enslaved. There was a day in your life when life, the devil, evil had you, had you enslaved, had you chained. But God was reminding Moses, tomorrow that's going to change because I'm bringing you out. You know why you're sitting there today? In this tall cotton right here today, just worshiping God, because God brought you out. There were chains all over you, tangled all over you. But God says, I want you to remember something. It's my hand that have brought you out. It's my love that brought you out and rescued you. Never doubt my love, never doubt my provision. I'm the only constant in this unconstant world. Now I remind you today that God has brought you to a broad place, a wide place, a wide place. Remember that the Lord has done this. Just the Lord has done this. And I want you to remember about celebrating this Passover with me. And every year, the, the Orthodox Jews still celebrate the Passover. And many Messianic Jews still do. The only difference in the Messianic Jew is they believe in the power and the blood of Jesus. So they remember 
their old way of life, but they embrace their new way of life. Yes, and Paul reminded you this. This is why every time we come together and remember the Lord's table, we sit and we, we drink the wine and we break the bread and we eat that. Some of you ought to try that, you know. If you're a believer, that's what you should be doing. Can I be real and direct? If you're a born again believer, that's what you should. Because every time you do this, this is what Jesus said. When he had that last meal with his disciples, he says, I want you to do this. And I want you to remember me. And remember that we won't do this again until we come into our kingdom together. Oh, there's going to be a feast one day. Mm -mm -mm. I wish I could tell you what was on the menu. I don't know what's on the menu. But I know that the lamb that was slain before the foundations of the earth, he'll be there to serve me. Hallelujah. Don't forget, don't forget, don't forget. Some of you have forgotten where you came from. Some of you have forgotten where you came from. That's why we can be guilty of substituting, putting other things before the Lord. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There's nothing more important than Jesus. And if that doesn't mean something to you, one day it will. One day when your life goes flat, what if God forgot us when we needed Him the most? What if I'm 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 closing? What if God? Oh, there's so much in here. Don't forget where you came from. Don't forget what God has done in your life. The stones. Yes, I know. I was getting there. I was going to say the stones are going to have to wait, but let me tie it together with the stones. You'll say, why did Pastor R bring all those rocks to church? Not so you could throw them at me, okay? I'll be honest with you, some of you want to throw them at me sometime. Come on. Come on. Lord, listen, listen. If, if I ever did, if I ever throw stones at you because of what I think sometimes, I'd be throwing rocks all the time. No, I'm just kidding. I love you. These stones, what do these stones mean? What? That's what God told Joshua to tell the children of Israel. Because when they left Egypt, they went to the wilderness. And then they got to the Jordan. They got to the place to cross over. And because of their, their complaining and murmuring and their unbelief, then they were cursed to wander in the wilderness for 40 more years. Horrible. A whole generation of people died out. Hear me out. Please hear me out. We're, we're tying this together. This is important. Until a whole generation has passed away. Until they came to the Jordan again. And came to a place called Shittim. Which was the place preparing for the crossing over. God's always preparing us for tomorrow. Today is about tomorrow. It's not just to make you feel good today, but today is about getting you ready for tomorrow. Turn to somebody and say, he's getting me ready. Church, he's getting you ready. He's getting the church ready. One day there's going to be a mass exit, exodus from this planet. Listen, it's, it's going to be so bizarre and strange that people won't even have answers for it. 
because God's getting ready to leave, get the church out of here. Up the road just a little ahead. And you know what? You've got to get ready for that time right now. He's preparing you like he did a cinema. He said it was a place they camped and they prepared to cross over. And when they crossed over, they got the priest. You know the story in the Ark of the Covenant. And there they brought, I, I think I've got one of those. I don't know if I have that or not. I, I don't even remember. Oh, man, isn't that something? I don't remember if I sent those to you or not, Lakin, so I'm sorry. See? That's why I got to have Mrs. R and I. We need each other, I'm telling you. Where did you set that, honey? Uh, let me see. I believe I last set that over here. So, got the Ark of the Covenant, and they got the priest, and they went across, and God rolled back the Jordan River. Jordan is a place of crossing. It's a new dimension. God's getting ready to take the church to a new dimension. A new place. A new place. A new place of glory. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you so caught up in today's festivities that you can't even hear what I'm saying? They're getting ready to cross over. I'm getting ready to do a new thing. The old things, the former things are going to pass away. Behold, I'm ready to do a new thing. Behold, I'm ready to do a new thing. Behold, I'm ready to do a new thing. God can't let you do the new until you let go of the old. Let go of the past. Let go of unforgiveness. Let go of bitterness. Let go. Let go of getting even. You're playing God's game there when you try to. Let go. And let God. He said, when you pass over, he said, I want you to do something. I want you to take these 12 stones. I want you to take 12 stones. One stone representing every tribe from the nation of Israel. 12 stones, 12 tribes. And I want every tribe to remember this day what I have done. Let me tell you something. We don't, we forget this. Every life that comes to Jesus. Every life that comes through the blood and through the cross crosses the Jordan we look at it as though nothing happens that's the most grand day in the life of any human on this planet that's why I don't understand people checking their watches and, and looking and moving around And there's nothing more important than that day the day you give Jesus your life, there was nothing more important in than you that day. Listen, when your neighbor gives his life to Jesus, there's nothing more important than that day. Your hamburger will wait. Your chicken leg will wait. There's nothing more substantial and important than that day. When people are baptized, they're burying their past in the Jordan. In the Jordan, we're burying our, our sins in the sea of forgetfulness. We're crossing over to a new level, a new dimension. This is a new day. This is a new day dawning in the life of the church. This is a new moment in the life of the church. I want you to put 12 stones. And when they pass through, he says, I want you to take those same stones. And I want you to take him to a place called Gilgal. It's real close here, Joshua. And I want you to raise those stones up. And I want you to remember them. And every time your children pass by them, I want you to remember this day. 
You see, we don't look at this. We don't look at Jake carrying his dad's bag in here. We don't look at that as something to remember. But listen, he may forget that game that he got beat in or that game he won. But he'll never forget that day that he carried he carried his dad's armor and he laid it down. I promise you, he ain't going to ever forget that day. There are things he's going to forget, but he won't ever forget that day. What you do in front of your kids, they don't forget. So you better be careful what you do in front of your kids. Mommy and daddy, you better be careful what you do in front of your kids. You praise God in front of your kids. You pray. You seek God's face. You be faithful. You take them to the house of prayer. You assemble them. Mom and dad, because every time they pass by those stones, they're going to remember what I've done for them. I tell you something we don't do in the lost start. We don't tell stories anymore. <laughs> yeah. Oh. oh. Whoa. You got to tell your story. Tell your story, your kids. Yes, I played at West Virginia. I was a rock star athlete from Norton, Virginia, and I played football there. But, oh, that's wonderful and that's good. They'll remember that. Oh, but kids, I want you to remember how I love Jesus. I want you to remember that I was faithful to God. I want you to remember I didn't forget his word. I want you to remember... And every time they pass by, they're going to remember that. You know what? If time permits, I'll lay in state. I'll lay somewhere. Maybe. I don't know. My body's not disintegrated or blown up over the sea or in some mission or something. I don't know. But chances are I'll lay. And when people pass by me, I want them to remember something. That there was a crazy old pastor that loved you enough to tell you the truth. Even when you didn't want to hear the truth. Because you see, my kids are passing by our stones today. And I want you to remember these things and don't forget them. That's why God, that's one God placed you. So you wouldn't forget what God, not just there, but here. That's prophetic. Are you hearing what the Lord is saying? Remember what God, he didn't just place you here. You're not a knot on a log. You're not just a number. You're not just somebody there. God placed you here for a reason. He reminds us, going some bitch. You're going somewhere, brother. Just remind them. Uh, so much more, but we're not. We're closing it right there. I want you to remind them. Remind them. Just remember, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget. And Paul, Peter said in the gospel, 1 Peter 2, he said, this is what I want you to remember. By way of remembrance, I say these things to you so you won't forget. And I remind you to stir this up. By way of remembrance. Today the Holy Spirit is trying to stir your memory bank up. Some of you have been hit with spiritual amnesia. And God says, I want you to remember what I've done for you. Remember how I blessed you. Remember the day in that easy. 
ICU unit. Remember that day when you coded. Remember that day when you could have checked out. Remember, Kevin, that I've got a plan for you. This isn't just about your... Whoa, I just broke my glasses all to pieces. I'm excited. I'm a... Oh, mm. Mm. Remember, I brought you out of that for a reason. I gave you life for a reason. Not just to, but my hand is upon you. I got things I want to do. I got things I want to say. I got things. I got plans. I got a future. I've got a plan. I want you to remember that, Kevin. The Lord says, don't forget what I've done for you. Let's all stand to our feet. It's a little bit longer than I wanted to go. Sorry. I want you to remember. I want you to remember. I want you to remember. Don't forget. Don't forget. Don't forget. Don't forget. Don't forget what brought you from. Don't forget that day. Don't. Oh. Listen, you stay right there. Quick, aren't you? Don't forget that day. Don't forget that day. Because my hand was upon that, the Lord says. I brought you out. And I've done things in you. I've graced you with my glory and my presence. And I've constantly reminded you that I have you. And not to fear and not to worry. Not to look to your left or right. Not look to this one or that one. But your salvation is in me, the Lord says. I've given you the strength to go on. I've given you the courage to face your battles. And I'm not stopping now, the Lord says. And I want you to remember, it's by my hand I have done this in your life. Remember this day. Remember this day, the Lord says. Don't forget it. Don't forget. Don't forget. Don't forget. Every head bowed. Remind everyone, Lord. There's an old song of the church called, Remind Me, O Lord. There's another song I was trying to tell Jenny and Heath this morning. Kathy and I was singing it a cappella at home by Papa Spear. And it's never, I never shall forget the day when the burdens of my life were rolled away. Oh, I never shall forget the day when all the burdens of my life they rolled away. It makes me happy, glad, and free. I'll sing and shout it for he's everything. Come on, if you know that old song. I never shall forget the day when all the burdens from heart were rolled away. Yeah, it made me happy, glad, and free. I'll sing and shout it for You remember that day? You remember that day? Roll away. You made me happy, glad, and free. I'll sing and shout for each everything. Yeah! Oh, sinner, come to Jesus now. Yeah, you'll make you happy, glad and free. I sing and shout it for each everything. To Whoa, me. yeah, come on! I never shall forget the day.
tell you. Closing here today. Let me tell you something. We'll have picnics today. God bless you. I might have one later too. I might eat me a, a hot dog. I don't know. Can you believe that? I might eat a dog, hot dog. We might wave some American flags. We might have some watermelon. I don't know. Some tater salad. I don't know. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That doesn't make me remember this special time. What we're doing here today makes me remember a greater time when Jesus voluntarily got up on that cross on the field of battle when everybody was against him he got on the cross anyway because I was on his mind he was thinking of me <laughs> Josh he was thinking of you Oh, how could he, Pastor? Oh, that's been so long ago. How could he be remembering me? I don't know how God remembers what he does, but he said he'll never forget you. So today, we're here today to remind you. To remind you, God says, don't forget what I've done for you. Remember this day. Remember this day. And Peter says, Remember to a point that you have to stir yourselves up to remember. Every day you should get up thanking God for what he's brought you from. So today could we bow our heads? I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. I feel a corporate anointing in this place. I feel the power of the living God in this place. And if you're here today and you forgot where you came from, you forgot that there's somebody that loves you, I don't care where you've gotten in your, in your life, you could never get such a distance from God that he would never remember you. He loves you today. And he's reaching his hand to you. He said, I want you to remember what I've done for you. Remember that. And I want you to come to me and trust me. So if you're here today and you need Jesus in your life, you've never given your life to Jesus, I want to see your hand today. Just by the lifting of your hand, say, pray for me, Pastor. I need Jesus in my life. God bless those hands. Oh, Jesus, God bless those hands. Anyone else? God bless those hands. Yes. Jesus. There's a healer in the house. There's a God who loves you. Remember that. Don't forget that. And if you're here today and you need him, I'm going to ask you to do something. I'm going to ask you to do the most courageous thing you'll do in your life. is to take a step of faith, trusting God totally with your life, and say, God, I don't know. I've got myself in a mess. But Lord, I know the only one that can truly help me. I want you to know that. I want you to remember that today. God doesn't make empty promises. He signed those with his blood. He's committed to it. And if you're here today and you raised your hand right now, and I felt like so many others wanted to raise your hand, and maybe you're in a place right now I'm ashamed to raise my hand. I can get that to a point, but that's called pride. And, and we've got to be willing to lay it all aside, no matter what, and just come to Jesus and say, Jesus, I surrender all. So on the count of three, I want those hands that were raised. I want you to come right now. One, two, three. I want you to come right now. There's people waiting on you right now to pray. Come on right now. Come right now. Thank you, Jesus, for all these who are coming today. Thank you, Jesus, right now for all those coming. All those. Come on. Give them a hand. Give them a hand. Give them a hand right now. Come on. 
Give them a hand right now. There's others, there's others, there's others here. There's others here that need God's safe grace. There's others here that need to be reminded. And every life that's coming here today is a reminder to us that the blood of Jesus is still powerful to save and cleanse and heal. Think about that. Every life you see coming is a reminder that I am still God and besides me that my blood is sufficient to wash away all your sins. Right now, there's others that need to come. Right now. Getting ready to close. Right now. Getting ready to close. Don't miss this opportunity. Don't miss this opportunity. Come on, tater salad await. Hot dogs await. I respect your I respect your time. Yes, thank you, Jesus, for all these that are coming today. Thank you, Jesus, for all these that are coming today. awesome things going on at the altar. How many knows there's things to remember going on at the altar? And they're still going on. So, hey, we're not shutting the lights off, but we are going to do a dismissal prayer. And I've, I've got a testimony real quick, and then I want Roman to dismiss us in prayer. Here's a challenge. By the way, how many believe that's good preaching today? Josh, I think he passed up the good preacher and just started showing off there for a minute. God was showing off a little bit. When he got to singing, I said, I'm just out. I'm out. He's, he's showing off. God is good. We've got a testimony and dismissal prayer. Let me just say this. When you have your time Monday or whatever you do this weekend, if you do have any time to do that, take a moment to remember, okay? Do remember those that died in, in war and remember that all Jesus has done for you. Remember this message and remember what God is doing in your life, okay? It's an awesome thing to have grace and freedom to eat hot dogs and ride boats. Thank God, right? Amen. I want, to, I want this powerful testimony and Romo, I'd like you to pray us out. 
So you guys have been praying for our grandson, Baby Logan. He was taken to St. Jude's last week. There was a mass found. And all the tests came back. The tumor is benign. And it's he got to go home. So that's just a huge victory. And they're going to remove the tumor once he gets to test negative for COVID. So it's all good. <laughs> Amen. feel like somebody here needed to hear that testimony, right? It's all benign. It's all good, right? See, that's something we can say over our lives is it's all good, right? So, Father, I thank you right now, God. I thank you for, for our memory, God. I thank you for our ability to recall where we used to be, God, that we are no longer who we once were because we are a new creation. And, Father, I thank you for this Memorial Day. I thank you for for our, our, our memorials that we place today, God. We woke up declaring that today would be a day of that, Father, of altars being made. And God, I just thank you that someone did that. And I thank you that today is that day, God. I praise you. Protect us, keep us, guide us, use us, Lord. We bless you, we thank you, and we go into the world to spread your gospel in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. <laughs> 